All right, so we've had issues with our D-Bot vacuum. It is making a terrible noise when it runs. We swapped the brush out, it didn't work. Uh, we cleaned it, it didn't work. Called customer service, it didn't work. Um, took the motor out, redid some of the lubrication, uh, moved the lubrication around so to try to fix it that way, it didn't work. Uh, we tried everything, so here is what it used to sound like. Then we ordered a replacement motor and did a swap out on the motor. And this video is about how to swap that out um, as best as I could do with shooting it myself and trying to do the work at the same time. So I hope it helps. I hope it helps you save your vacuum um, like it seems like it did for ours. So please enjoy. All right, so here's my brush motor that we ordered. You recognize that part from right there? That is, this is inside there. And I think that's what's making the terrible noise. So we're gonna try to swap this out today after it took, I don't know, three weeks to get here, maybe a little more. We take the brush out, take all this stuff out, take the battery out, pop all these screws. And they're all Phillips head, if I remember right. So I have this big old kit, but you don't necessarily need it. If you have a little Phillips head, I think you can do it. This is the model that I cannot read. D, good grief. That is a, for all you guys over 40, you can pause here. D, I can't tell if it's an eight or a B. D eight three G dot eleven. This is an Ecovax um, D bot, and it's still on. There you go. All right, so we're gonna take some screws out. Gotta love that. Got a little magnetic magic. This gets dicey when you get everything open, but this part is really not that tricky. Not that tricky? What is the not that tricky? got a very important part of this process. In fact, I did forget it just now. Make sure you take out your battery. It's not always easy to do. Yeah, pull that. Now we're good. You're going to have to pull those screws too, I think. Uh, there's, you just kind of have to work it until you get it to where you can open it. So this is a good thing to have. This is something I use all the time. It's a telescoping magnet. And some of these screws don't wanna come out of here. So I take my little pick tool, stick it down in the hole and put this magnet with it and it basically turns that into a magnet and then you can get the screw out. I just did it a minute ago. Thought you guys might wanna see. These little pick tools are also good if you're going to be messing with this kind of stuff. These little silver screws have to come out. A little 
magnet action. So those don't get lost because someone's messing with them. <laughs> so I have a little magnetic tray I put all the screws in. Let's see what else we got. All right, so these little guys have to come out too, and uh, I forgot about that. So these have to come off. I, I took this apart a couple weeks ago, and now I can't remember everything that has to happen, but we'll go through it. Um, this is just a little, like, half moon crescent shape thing that is on here as a protector. So this is my least favorite part. Once you take off your little half moon cover that goes here, this piece, once you take that piece off, this just kind of comes out. And it's gotta come off because you have to get to some screws that you can see when you flip this thing over. <clears throat> Yeah, all these wires, that's exactly what's a pain. So these have to be flipped down and these wire harnesses have to be disconnected so you can take off this whole sensor bar that's in the front. So uh, we're gonna try to do that uh, on video, but it's, it definitely takes two hands. All right, so I did this with the Wii U and swapped out a disk drive. Um, couple weeks ago <clears throat> excuse me and those are flip downs but these just come off uh, but they are not easy it's just hard to get in there and you don't want to strain any of these wires really uh, because that is going to be difficult to recover from it's close set up like wide pliers would help, but I don't have that. I don't think. Yeah, you want to be careful not to damage any of this stuff. There's one. See? Yeah. <laughs> Don't cut any of those wires. It's a kind of double-edged sword. Like you want a firm grip on it to get the job done, but if it slips off, not good. So don't do what I just, oh, don't do that. It looks okay. I almost, uh, almost messed up big time. I don't have an, uh, another way to do this because I don't have the proper tool and I cannot, that one's too small. You really don't want to yank on the wires either because they can come unseated from inside these little guys. <clears throat> and I think those are, yeah, those are kind of soldered in there. So you just kind of have to fingernail this. This is the last one, and it's probably going to be the most fun. Can't tell you how useful I find my little 90 degree pick. There's just nothing to hook it on. There we go. So now we can take this piece totally off. Oh, did you cut her open? Well, I need to get her open. You cut her open. Well, I have to, Samuel. Uh, okay. I have to. The iPad thing, the button will still stay there. The button. Honestly, don't remember how I got this off last time. 
We will learn together. And there's something holding it still. All right, so it was just a couple of click tabs in the back. So this is now off. We have more of these to deal with, but they are easier to get to. Good grief. That is the power cord, uh, power button wire harness right there. So it's taped up here. So you can undo that tape and get a little bit more room to work. But really, it just needs to come out of there. So there's the top. And there's a back sensor. So we're gonna set that to the side. And here is the brains of the operation and there's our motor. Where's the motor? The motor's right here. Ooh, that looks so bad. So you can see, looks like we have the right motor. So there's our wire harness. It looks like it matches. And we're not left-handed. So we're gonna try to get this doodad off without <clears throat> unseating it. some actual pliers somewhere yes that are not cutters there we go yeah we did I'm free. So now I have to remember. All right. How is this booger in here? What is a booger? What? It's just what I'm calling the motor right now, Bubba. A booger? All right. So what you have to do is take this cover off of the. World. This is, would be the, the I guess, the left wheel. Um, the right. Obviously, the one closest to the. Not so right. Obviously, the one closest to the motor. This has to come out of the way, and you can disconnect these or not. And if you look down in here, there is a screw all the way at the bottom. There is. So it was not going to come out without removing that screw. So we'll get down in here with our screwgy. And we'll see you back in a little bit. This is why I love my magnet. Yep. It works. Not quite doing it. There we go. Dink. Did you get it? And there's our motor. Uh, you took that so that's the old motor. I'm going to test it out and see what happens. And it does have some lubrication inside of there. I took this all apart last time. Moved the lubrication around, tried to get it on the cogs and the sprockets and all of that. And now um, it, it did not improve the situation. So Can I see your magnet, Daddy? It looks like this motor has a brake. 
something is broken on this motor, the brand new one. I don't know if it's going to work out. Because it's missing this prong. Two prongs here, one prong here. If you can see that. So that's how you batten this thing down. So we'll see how it goes, if this will stay put or not. put our motor in and man that looks like it's not gonna work that looks rough the new motor is missing a prong one prong two prongs that's how this motor stays attached to the vacuum so what I'm going to attempt to do is take the old case lid off of the old one and put it on the new one and hopefully uh, then we can attach everything is this, the new one? this is the new one this is the old one hopefully then we can get what we need out of it and we don't have to send it back and delay this even further so <clears throat> I took this off last time and there's a couple of little clips that you can see right here. So I love my pick tools. These are fragile. They will break on you. I broke one already. They are easy to break. Unfortunately, they all have to be moved at like the same time. And there's, it's full of goo, so I'm protecting my table here with plastic. Uh, it's got all kinds of lubrication in it. I took this apart last week. You know what, let's mark these. Samuel, go give me a Sharpie out of the drawer. So we're gonna mark these so we're, <laughs> we're sure which one's the new one. Because they are basically identical. And I'll try to post the listing for this in the comments. So if you need to get a So I have an O for old, an N for new. So if you need to get one, I'll try to post where I found it so you can get one too. And have as much fun as we're having. O for old and N for new. So use caution. Because there is a stack of gears in there and a little belt. I mean, this this is what I felt like was the problem. It felt like these gears were missing, but then when I looked at this, it seemed okay. It's really weird. It'll be interesting to see what the new one looks like. But this is the part that we want because it has two prongs on it. Mm. Try not to break anything on the new one. This is not easy. I feel like you have to be so gentle, but you have to be firm too. It's almost like parenting. Right, Samuel? Oh, just click back in. I'm probably voiding any warranty that this motor has. Old motor. New motor. I don't see any difference, but I was able to get the back off of the old one that has the prongs that we need, so we're going to click it into place if possible. 
Maybe it's not possible. And it is possible. Now we have two prongs on the new motor. Let's put it in and see what happens. All right, now we're gonna pop this thing in. It resides here. I'm gonna put our screw in, <clears throat> put our wheel in, button this thing up. Hopefully it works. It's really hard to get you to see this, but that's where the screw goes. And it is rather difficult to reach. Connect our clippity doo dah. Mm. This is at a kind of awkward angle. New motor in. That sits there. We have a spring to manage. So when I took the motor out and took it apart a couple of weeks back, it worked for a little while and then it started making a noise again. Now we've been running for two minutes and it's not making the noise. All right, so put the new motor in and this thing's working. Now it's not making that terrible noise. $12, about 45 minutes or an hour's worth of work. And we're good to go. Vacuum still works. So we didn't throw it away and spend another 150 bucks. Just replace the brush motor. And you can too. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.